There are ten commandments. And I know when Jesus came, he added more to that to help us know how to live with people, how even to live with God. And so, the word of God says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and the most important commandment. God himself knew. Jesus uttered these words and he said that you shall love your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. And it is the greatest commandment. As we are the children of God, called by the name of God, the greatest commandment that God has given us is to love him with all our heart. And I want to tell you something. When you love God with all your heart, it makes a difference. When you love God with all your soul, with all your mind, it makes a difference. Today, let me uh, just give an example. Probably, uh, I may not have some food in the house. And then, I come and approach somebody and tell them, somebody that love people, you know, love me. And I say, you know what, today I don't have, I don't know what my meal will come from. Somebody who is full of love, and you have something that you can share. You're not just going to stand there and say, Oh, Pastor Sarah, I love you. You are the best. I think about you. Don't give me all that. Give me something to eat if you really love me. Don't just tell me with mere words. I want to see actions. And so, when we love God, we have to show actions that we love God. If today, uh, probably I go somewhere and I see a nice dress and I want to buy it, and I approach my husband and I'm like, I saw a dress somewhere that uh, I like. Can you buy for me? And then my husband is there telling me, oh, sweetheart, honey, whatever, all those sweet, sweet ones, I love you so much and I can see the account has some money but he doesn't want to part with anything to buy for me a dress. I will have a question. If I am not able to have gas in my car and I'm telling my husband, hey, my car is empty and I can see the account and the wallet has some but he's there telling me, you know what, you are the love of my life, I care so much about you, it is God who, who put us to go and tell me those many words. Just feel the time for me and I'll understand that you really love me. So what, what am I trying to say? That if, the reason that's why Jesus said it is the greatest commandment is because he knew if we love God with all our hearts, with all our souls, and with all our minds, we are going to be dedicated to him. When it comes to seeking the face of God, because of our love, I want to tell you something. It is not easy. For you to forfeit food for, for even three days, not, let me not even go three days, just one day, especially here in America where food is calling you like this. It is not easy. But when you love God, you are going to put aside that food and you are going to say, God, I am coming to you. It is not because I don't have food in the house. It is not because I want to build a story building. It is not because I needed to buy a plane, but I'm coming to you as a sign of my love for you, and I am dedicating this day to build a relationship with you. I am going to set aside this food. I am going to set aside any luxury that I may have experienced today. Sometimes, and I don't, I don't know why for some reason, when we are fasting, that is when we get offers. That is why even when somebody who does not give you anything, they are willing to give you something. But when you are not fasting and you are really looking forward to get something, I'm telling you, what to our grocery. I don't know why it happens. And so, for you to have an educated life to God, you have to love God with all your heart. You don't leave anything 
and where your heart is, that is where your treasure is. If you really love God, that is where you are going to put your treasures. You are going to put faith in God. You are going to invest your love and your relationship with God because you love God with all your heart. And I want to tell you that this is the first and the greatest and the most important commandment, loving God with all that you have. And I was asking myself, God, just help me. I was asking, God, have I purified? Do I love you with all that I have? Does my mind, does my soul, does my heart love you fully the way you want me and I, to love you? And I was, I was telling God that, God, I really need you to help me on this one. And as I said, love is more than words. It's more than emotions. It is a conscious commitment to God. It is a decision that you make to be commit yourself to God. It is not it is not about here and standing here and jumping, going round and saying, I love God. It is about my commitment. I make a to everything to God. I did not say that you, you don't sing and dance for God. That one is given. We have to do it. But besides that, there is something else besides standing and jumping for God. And there is something else besides just saying words that I love God. Because I have noticed in this world, everybody loves God. Some people are singing crazy, crazy songs. And they, may, they, are, so, they are naked. And the words that they are saying, my goodness, they are vulgar words. But when you listen to their interviews, all of them love God. I want to tell you, when you love God, you are going to be careful of what you are going even to sing. You are going to be careful of the words that will come from your mouth. When you love God, it is a commitment and you'll be asking because I will give an account of every idle word that I've spoken. When I go before God, what how am I going to be judged? It is a commitment. And so, uh, I hope I have explained about the heart. And now we are going to go to a subtopic that talks about the kind of heart that God likes. We are going to talk about, now, this is a subtopic of the kind of heart that God likes. And we are going to go in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verse 13 to 14. And the first thing that God looks, God is looking for a heart that loves and serves him. Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verse 13 to 14. A love, a, a, a heart that loves and serves God. And the word of God says, if you carefully obey my commandments that I am giving you today, to love the Lord your God and worship him with all your heart and all your soul, I will provide rain for your land in the season, in, in season, the early and the, and the late rains, and you will harvest your grain, new wine, and oil. The word of God is telling us, well, let's go back to verse number 13. It says, if you carefully obey the commandments that I give you today, to love the Lord your God and to worship him with all your heart and with all your soul. You know what? God is looking for a heart that loves him, a heart that worships him, a heart that you will worship God without having anything left behind, with all your heart and with all your soul. So today, as we are called by the name of God, 
He is calling us to love him with all our heart. He is calling us to worship him or to serve him. Worship is service to God. So, God is looking for a heart that loves him and a heart that worships him. A heart that serves him. And now, I want to tell you something. Serving God is not just standing here and sharing the word of God. Serving God is in so many dimensions. But the question is, do you serve God? Do you worship God? How deep do you love God? Because if you, if you love somebody, you serve them. If you love them, you care about them. How is your heart? Does your heart love and serve God? Does your heart worship God and God alone? Because sometimes we worship the things that we have unknowingly. Sometimes you, we may even worship the things that God has given us such that you are so attached to something. And one time I, I know I was so attached to something. And I remember God speaking to me. The, those days when I was in Kenya. And I had bought a meko. And I had really struggled to buy a meko. And there was a need in the church. And God spoke to me to give that meko to the church. But I was like, oh God, no, how? I have really struggled to buy this. And you know, you know that I need it. Why God do you want me to part with this meko? You remember those orange ones? Huh? And you know when you have a stuff. And then it gets when you you put it out my goodness and that smoke i was like oh no god but just understand and i started negotiating with god and finally i thought i thought god forgave me because that is how we comfort ourselves oh god understands yes he know that i needed to i comforted myself yes even god understood that i should not be having my eyes you know smoked by that stuff that you throw water you remember the way we used to put them out you get some water and throw it and then the smoke comes and you start crying so i thought god understood and i thought i succeeded and i was forgiven but god meant it guess what <laughs> well i went to a to an overnight vigil when i came back in the morning I was like, can I go back and come again? I was, okay, is this my house? I would come and then come again to believe, is this my house? I'm telling you, the mecca was gone. The radio was gone. My clothes were gone. So that mecca carried even what I did, God had not asked for. And I was telling God, now how God? I was in your house, DK Remuno. And the way I was, I praised that day. And the way I prayed. But I want to tell you, your commitment and your love to God will keep you from withholding even what you love most. That if God tells you to do this, you are going to do it. If God sends you, you are going to go. You know what? And to make the matter worse, even my brother's clothes, because I used to live with, to stay with my brothers, they were gone. My brother had bought some new suits. They were gone. I had a nice fancy leather jacket. And you know what that meant in Kenya? It was gone. And even every coin that was in the house, it was gone. And I was asking myself, I wish I just obeyed and gave this to God. So I want to tell you, when God quickens you and tells you to do something, please don't argue with him. Don't argue with him. God could see far. He could see that I'm not even supposed to have a mecca. I'm supposed to have an oven and a grill. But myself, I was like, oh, I worked, I saved so much and I had to plan and get somebody who worked in DOD because you'd get it without taxes <laughs> and so I got a discount <laughs> 
But God was like, these that you have worked for and that you have loved, give it in my house. I'm telling you, that is how it went. And I underwent a very big loss. And so I said, I'm going to behave myself. I'm going to love God with everything that God has given me. And I was asking myself, sometimes, like when we get, uh, sometimes we have needs going on. And we have deadlines to meet. But what the devil does, he is just so cunning. And our God is reasonable. He's telling me, okay, you got a thousand. Take the, hard, the 900. I'm not asking you whichever way you are going to spend it. But please give, bring me just a hundred. And guess what the devil does? He shows you like that. But seriously, I have a 900. Just 100 is what God is asking. But when I, when I, I, I want to do something, I see a, a new dress that I would like to buy. I'm like, oh, to this month, God just excuse me because this dress will go. That 100, I'm going to spend it on that dress. Let me tell you. Prioritize. Prioritize. Whatever belongs to God, give it to God. Don't. I am telling you, it is not going to take you anywhere. You will eat it, it will become a habit, and the devil will be celebrating and will be telling God, look at your people. Oh, you say that they, they, they love you, look at them. Even that hundred, Lord, they can't give you. Or you give that person a hundred and they, they don't want to spend the ninety. They want to spend all the hundred and deny and, and the devil telling God. You know he has a right to go before him. Even a ten, they can't give you but they love you. Imagine. When he see that we say that we love God and we cannot even support what God is supporting. We cannot even be faithful and tell God, God, you have given me this. You only need this little amount. That is what I'm going to give you. So a heart, God is looking for a heart that worship him. If you worship him, if you serve him, if you love him, you are not going to withhold. You are going to take your time. Read the word of God. Listen to things that are going to bless you. Listen to things that are going to lift your faith. But if all you do, you claim to love God, like every new, there's a new song that is there. And then the devil is rejoicing and telling God, they are not even praising you. Instead of praising God, they know all the, the wildly songs. May God help us. I had a problem. I admit that. I had a problem. Stopping the wildly songs, I had a problem. But it's not a problem anymore. And I thank God. The second point that I'm going to talk about, God is looking for a heart that loves him and is circumcised that was a little bit deep he's looking for a heart that loves him and is circumcised let's go in the book of deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 6 just verse 6 deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 6 and i'm going to read the Lord your God will circumcise your hearts and the hearts of your descendants. And you will love him with all your heart and with all your soul so that you will live. The Lord your God will circumcise your heart. And the hearts of your descendants. And you will love him with all your heart and all your soul so that you will live. So God is looking for a heart that he himself will circumcise. 
And with that heart, you, we are able to love God, us and our descendants. And the other thing that comes with all that, we are able to live. And this brought me back to the village when it was December, when we were having that, you know, ritual going on. And I was thinking about the way I saw those men after they underwent the ritual and there were some people elder, older than them would go. It was not just about them having it, the, their body circumcised. It was about even their mind. It was about their heart. And I can tell you, those of us who are on fourth floor, third floor, fifth floor, sixth floor, you know what I'm talking about. Huh? Because I remember when men were circumcised back in our days, I don't know about now, but they were given special food. They never used to work. They stayed somewhere whereby people who are older than them would go there and give them advice. They would come and remove the mentality of a boy and give them and teach them the mentality of a man. How a man is supposed to behave. How a man is supposed to act. And I'm telling you, they got all the good food. That after that one month, when they came out, we used to call them shumeri. And they would to come out and say, I'm a man at Orozaju. I don't know what that meant. Huh? And they looked so, they were, their faces were glowing. They gained some weight because they matirare ma. And we respected that so much. It was time for them to to be instructed with discipline. It was a time for them to be taught how to stop being boys and behave like men. It was a time for them to be initiated from boyhood to manhood. And I want to tell you those days, if you tried to call that man that had gone circumcision a boy when they were there, I think the, the worst word you could have called them is a boy because they know they paid the price for them to be a man. And I was thinking, one time I saw one of our neighbors after he came out from the gira or whatever they call them, and then he found some boys playing the ball in the, uh, out there in the field. And because he loved so much, to play the ball, and had not played the ball for a whole month. What that man, that man, the discipline he was given, I don't even want to tell you. And I'm telling you, he was beaten, they tortured him, and I looked at him. That was stupid, by the way. What is wrong in Reverend praying with our children? Let's be realistic. What is wrong? You want to tell me that you cannot go there and pray with, with our, we cannot pray with our children? Me, I'm bad. I do it. If it is, and I know you know it. If it comes to behaving like a tomboy, I'll go there and pray with the children. And they love it. But the way these people took it is like this man is letting us down. Those days, you are letting us down. You cannot behave like this. And that is why God is telling us that himself is going to circumcise our hearts. So that we can, and we will love him with all our hearts and all our soul. So that we will live. I want to tell you, God is looking for that mature heart. It is a way for you now to move from your, you know, your usual heart, your hard heart. You are heart that does not know God. God is going to change it. He's going to give maturity to you so that you can love him and so that you can live. In order for us to live and live for God, as in our descendants, God is looking for that mature heart. And the only person that can make it mature, that can circumcise our heart, is, is God and God alone. I can see our time is gone, but I'm going to read uh, one more point and I know next time we will continue because we really need for God to work on our hearts um, let's go in the book of the, the other thing that God is looking, he's looking for a heart that keeps his word 
God is looking for a heart that keeps his word. And before we go there, um, okay, let's go in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 16. And I'm going to read. The Lord your God is commanding you to this day to follow these statutes and ordinances. You must be careful to follow them with all your heart and all your soul. So God himself is commanding us and he is telling us that we need to follow his statutes we need to follow his ordinances and we must be careful to follow them with all our heart. So God is looking for a heart that keeps his word. God is looking for a heart that obeys his word. God is looking for that heart that is careful to do the will of God. And I want to tell you, it is the hard time I was asking myself, am I careful to follow the words of God? Am I careful? Do I love God with all my heart, with all my soul? That everything you do, you are dedicating it to God. And I want to tell you, if we did that, our work will be so easy in serving God. If we truly loved God with everything, because everything originates from our heart, that is the core of everything that we do. If our hearts love God, if our hearts follow him, that is what God is looking for. God is so faithful. God is so precious. God is so mighty. And he is looking for that heart. And I know for sure I will get more time because I have not exhausted. That was just the beginning. Because when we change our hearts, we are going to serve God the way he wants us to serve him. When our hearts are changed, we are going to deal with the people of God the way God wants us to deal with them. When our hearts are changed, we are going to obey God that is what God is looking for and I was telling God Lord I need you in this area I need to be born again again you know what? I need to, to advance and go to the next level. You know sometimes when you listen to the word of God and it comes so powerfully on you, it is good for you to see yourself and not only to see the other people. It is the high time and I was telling God, is there an area the Lord I do not follow you? I was asking myself, oh God, do I obey? Do I follow your statutes and your ordinances? Do I follow your commandments? If God you have told me to forgive do i forgive if god you are telling me to give do i give if god you are telling me to love others the way i love myself do i love them that is what i was asking myself because most of the times we tend to look at the others and we don't see ourselves and that is what is called the pharisee spirit and that is the same spirit that crucified jesus jesus was not crucified but by drunkards. No, he was not crucified by those people who did not proclaim that they knew God. He was crucified by those people who were on the front line in the church. And I was telling God, God, I don't want to be a Pharisee. As you talk about our heart, Lord, I want my heart to change. I want you to create in me a new heart so that I can be a woman after your own heart. So that I can be able to serve you the way you want me to serve you. That was the cry of my soul and I was shaking I was telling God God I need you to help me I don't know about you today I don't know whether you feel like you are good but myself I, um, I don't feel that I, like I have you know accomplished it no I have a long way to go and as we go on the next time that I will take uh, the pulpit we are going to continue and then we'll go to the conclusion. I don't want to keep you until 
two, because I know some of you sacrificed, you came from work. Some of you are going to work. And I'm not going to stand here and finish the whole sermon when there is always a next time. But go and think about that word. Go and tell the Lord, Lord, I need to have a heart that loves and serves you. I pray that you give, you circumcise my heart. I want to be mature. You know, somebody can be mature physically. But the way they behave, you look at them and you are like, hi, there is a problem. I can even be saying that I, that, uh, I got born again when I was two years old. But I'm telling you, you look at me and you are like, two years old? And the way I'm behaving, you are like, this person doesn't know what they are talking about. Because it calls for maturity. It calls for commitment. It calls for keeping the word of God. And we are going to continue from there next time. I'm going to invite the praise team. Please come over so that we can worship the Lord. And tell God to help us to create in us a new heart. Nipe moyo safi boyo